Today we're talking about time travel and the work accomplished in past life regression by hypnotist Dolores Cannon. If you enjoy this video, we hope you'll give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below if you think past life regression is possible or not. Here we go. They changed it to is what was in her book. It gets even more amazing. Then a guy came and had a session with Dolores Cannon. He transitioned into a man that lived in 16th century France. He told Dolores he was in class. He was a student of Nostradamus. And they were talking back and forth. And then all of a sudden the man stopped as if he was listening to something. And then he said to Dolores, he wants to talk to you. Dolores said, who? And he said, Nostradamus. You say your mom had conversations with Nostradamus. Yes. And it was via more than one subject. Yes. And she was shocked. I would imagine. When, her, when, he first, when they first made the connection, the person she was working with went back to a time that he was a student of Nostradamus. And mom's thinking, well, this will be an interesting story. And then during the session, something that never happens, usually when you're talking to a subject, nobody around that person knows you're there. You're talking to the one subject, kind of like a voice in their head, but nobody else can hear you or know that you're there. Well, with this person, Nostradamus, of course, he was a great psychic. He turned to that student and said, I want to talk to the person you're talking to. And of course, mom's like, what? Oh, I, and she's like, okay, I don't know what to do now. And he turned and told her, he said that there was a job he wanted her to do. And that was uh, to translate the prophecies correctly. He said he saw that in our time, his prophecies had been brought down through time, but they were incorrectly translated. And that events were going to come to pass and we had not been warned. And so she's like, okay, what do I do with this? <laughs> totally out of the norm, you know, because she's been used to doing past life stuff. And so, and he told her what to do to connect back with her. And so she said, okay. Uh, and so when the girl woke up, she told the girl what had happened. And uh, she only had a few sessions with that girl because so she wound up moving away. Mm. And not where they could get together. So they got back together and she explained to him, because he said, you know, get, I see a book out there, get that book so that you can read me. We can go through the quatrains. And of course, mom told him, says, I don't know French. I can't read the French. And he said, that's okay because y'all don't speak the same French from my time. And so she gets the book and then the woman ex tells her that they're moving away. And so I'm sorry, I can't work with you anymore. So they had one last session so she could tell him, I'm sorry, you'll have to pick somebody else because we can't do this again. And he told her, he said, now that you've made this connection to me, you'll never lose me. I will come through anybody you want me to. And you're like, I, I, this is impossible. How do we do this? And so the, she found another person. She had lots of people who would just come to her in the beginning, experiment on me whatever you want to do, you know, just work with me. And so she got another subject that she had worked with before on stuff and did exactly what he told her to. And there he was. Okay. So, life. so did she, she would take in new subjects and then uh, she would just throw, th play the Nostradamus card and say, um, I want to talk to Nostradamus. Have you ever heard of that? Do you know that person? I mean, would well, she, would she make a request to talk to him? She or, had, they had a certain way of how, how she knew to contact him. I know part of it had to do with the tapestry. There's the tapestry of life and all of us are a thread in this tapestry. And there was a guardian who watched it, who would help her connect to him. And there was rules and stuff that you had to abide by and going through things. But I know that's one way she would connect to them. So would, would, would you say that in a, in a, in a, 
you know, I'm, I'm just going to put this in like a, a 21st century vernacular, but would it be that basically she and Nostradamus established a username and password that they could use to sync up? That's funny because I think my daughter said, uh, do, no, Dolly said the same thing to me. Really? She said, Did they have like a username and password? And I said, kind of, if you use our terms now. Because she had, uh, they had like a, a secret code between them that whenever she said her part and he said his part, she knew that she was talking to him and he knew that she was talking to her. Okay. Because there was cases later on where people were trying to get a hold of him and they would report back to mom saying, well, we think we got him, but his comment was, where's Dolores? And they would, he wouldn't talk to him. Because there wasn't, she wasn't her. Uh, I kept thinking, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it's almost like in the middle of the, uh, the hypnotic session with whoever it is, Dolores could just say, the sparrow flies at twilight. And if the girl back, <laughs> came back and said, but only if there's dew on the grass, she'd be like, I got him. I'm in. We're talking to the same person. Yeah, whatever rounds that she had. And then they'd say their stuff to each other. And so they knew. And it's like, okay, let's go. And they and start then, working on the next piece. And so, but when she was talking to Nostradamus, was it always through this intermediary person where yes. she would say, tell him I want to I wanna know about this, this, or I found this. And then she would check out and then she'd come back and say, all right, he said this. Is, is that the way it would work? Yeah, because a lot of times the subject, she would ask a question and the subject would put her hand up because he was talking to her. And then she'd say, okay, well, he says da, 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 da. And that's the way whenever she put the translation into the book, she would say, this is what came down through our time. But he said, this is what it actually means. Because they had a wrong thing. And the subject would say, he says this and he says that. So how long would you say, and, I, and I'm, I'm smiling out of sheer amazement and joy. I'm not, this is not a cynical smile at all. But how long would you say your mother and Nostradamus, their uh, Nostradamus's working relationship lasted? It was, um, it was a few years. Because the time period of having to work with different people, um, because she's got the three books where she covered all of the quatrains and the information that he was wanting to get out there. Uh, I'm trying, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember how many, but it was a few years there. So I know when it came time for book three, she worked, that's when she worked with like 12 different people. She just pulled all of her best subjects and just started work, you know, working with them alternately. And they didn't know when they started what they were working on, but they're like, Sure, go ahead. You know, because they just trusted her. And so she would take, it was the Erica Cheatham's uh, book that she was using of the translations. And she, she said, I don't know what I'm reading, so I don't know what order to read these in. So she would open the book and she'd read it. And then a couple of times, this is where some really strange stuff came in too. A couple of times he would ask her to reread that. And can you spell that word for me? And she's like, why? And of course, she couldn't read the French part because she didn't know how to speak French. Uh, there was times that it was like he was, he would tell he was re he was writing down what she was saying. And it was like, okay, are we helping him do something or is he helping us with something? He had explained to her that he was not a spirit floating around out there, that he was actually living in his time uh, in France or wherever he was at, he was not a dead spirit out there. So it started blowing your mind in lots of areas. So, so let me just understand her business model. I mean, I, I get the impression that she probably wasn't, well, you guys do a great job with your publishing company and, and doing your conferences and whatnot, but she's probably not charging these subjects to do hypnotic work. In the beginning, no, she never charged. Because what she she was just so fascinated with the process, and then she writes books about what happened, and that's how she can get paid for the work that she's doing. Uh, she was explore. She was being like an explorer. Yeah. Whenever the stories were coming through, 
Now, when people started coming to her wanting uh, her to help with issues that they were having. Okay, then that would be a business. That was different. But when she was working with different people and these stories were coming through, and then she was like investigating those stories. uh, Yeah, she was never charged anything there. Um, but she was doing, actually, she was doing her own work at that point. It was more uh-huh. about what she wanted out of it than the subjects, right? Right. It was like the subjects just appeared on her doorstep when she needed them. She wasn't looking for anything when the story would come through, but then when the story started coming in, she wanted to finish the story, and the person was just like, "Okay, you know." And okay, some she. This yeah. is amazing though, because she's got a relationship with somebody psychic. Your mother is not claiming to be psychic, is she? No, she never claimed to be psychic. No. no, had no interest. Didn't want to believe she was psychic. She was a hypnotherapist, and yeah. I would say and, the only thing she did previous to this was that she could read palms. Okay, and would shock people. I mean, big time with the stuff that she could tell them. But that's all she did, and but mm-hmm. she treated it as a game. Okay, and. Outside of that, right. you know, I, she never claimed to be psychic and people kept telling her she was, but that wasn't a claim that she took. So basically, she's not psychic and the people, the subjects that are coming in, they're not being, they're, they don't have any they're interest. Ordinary. <laughs> they, they don't claim to be psychic. No. But Nostradamus was so powerful, psychically. Yeah, somehow. That he, he could that. somehow tap into people in the future, into their minds, and in a hypnotic trance, speak to your mother. Somehow the connection, yeah. That very first time whenever she was working with his student, which was a by chance thing, because whenever you go to a past life, she never told you where to go. She would say, uh, go to the most appropriate time for something you need to see. And so, and she had some times where people would stay in this lifetime. You know, because of something that happened. Well, so they'd go someplace and then she would have to ask the questions to find out, where are you? You know, is, are you male or are you female? Are you, what do you got clothes on? You know, what they look like? She'd have to explore it to find out where the person was at. And uh, usually it was very hard to determine a time period for the person because way back in those years, a lot of them, that didn't mean anything to them. It might be the some year of the Lord of whatever. And so she would kind of get an idea of where they're at. But whenever she met up with Nostradamus, that connection was made whenever he knew his student was having some kind of an experience. And then he picked up on that and made that connection. She was never looking for him. She knew his name and just a pinch about him, but had never studied him. And so it wasn't like he was looking for her as far as she knows. But he ended up knowing your mom by name. Because they were working together. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the first time she came home and said, I think I was talking to Nostradamus today, you had to have kind of laughed. I mean. I think all of us kind of chuckled a little bit, you know, whenever she started talking about it. But then the stories. Yeah, right. Coming through, it was like, this is incredible. You know, it's. How, what, how far do you want to believe? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he's, he's actually, she found him. He was like, he's very male chauvinist. Uh, you know, she's a female. Well, we're just going to have to work with that. You know, that kind yeah. of attitude. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and was appalled at uh, the lack of education uh, that we have in our time to what he had in his time. He would talk about something and she would ask a question. And he'd say, Go look it up and basically sent her to the library to look up something because she should have known this, the education she had been, she should have learned this. And so they got to know, she got to know him very well. He actually had events happen in his life that during his time period where he would say, we have, we have to stop because a child has been hurt outside and I have to go tend to him. And so they would have to stop the session. And sometimes she would say, well, can we just wait until you get finished? And he said, no, because the housekeeper will come in to clean my room and she might see you as a spirit or a ghost. And she doesn't need that in her life. 
And so it was like, okay, we're, we seem to be alive at the same time right now. And so he was introducing to her simultaneous, 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 Simul. simultaneous time. And that's the first time she'd ever gotten that concept. Uh, has, did anybody ever do a, a movie or anything or any kind of a series about your mom and this relationship she had with him? Um, they did um, like the ancient prophecy series one and two, where they talked to her about uh, her connection with Nostradamus. And she said it was kind of funny when she listened to the video or the, it was movies at that time. A lot of the script that the narrator was saying was her script <laughs> is the stuff that she was telling them. Sure. Well, if it works and they can't say it any better than she did, why not? Yeah. Cause I was listening to it. And it's like, yeah, mom said that mom said that too. Mom said that. And it was, they shared, let them take the narration. But uh, yeah, the, those, the segment one and segment two were the ones that she was in. So when her relationship with Nostradamus concluded and she couldn't tap into him anymore, do you think she missed him? Oh, she could always tap into them. It's just she felt that their job was finished. Really? Because they had completed all of the tri quatrains. And so she didn't feel a need to have to connect to him again. Mm. So she probably could have at any time. And I think some people would ask her, and it's like, well, we kind of did that job. And she was going on to other things then. Yeah, but she could be having tea with him right now as we speak. As far as we know, yep, on the other side, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so would you say that was probably one of the most amazing parts of her career that you can recall? I think that was a huge one. Uh, I know one of the a uh, couple of the prophecies that came down, of course, dealt with 9-11. Mm. And we had gotten, uh, Mom had spoke about this in, um, I think it was 1995 is what the guy said. He was a cameraman at a conference that she was at in Dallas, Texas. And he contacted her after 9-11. And he said, I was filming. And I remember you telling us about this. About, that was the, two of the prophecies talked about 9-11. And the events that are going to happen. And those are the things that kind of blow your mind. Well, you know? in, what com in what context did your mom, your, your mom didn't predict it. Did that come from Nostradamus? Did Nostradamus say it was going to happen or? It was the prophecies. Okay. When they were properly translated, talked about, uh, and it's got the wording of it. And we'd have to go back and of course in the updates and all that's in there. Uh, but talked about the, the Twin Towers, the, the money center of the country, it pointed and then once, once it was uh, translated correctly, then he would say, well, this is what it means. And they'd go into details on it. Of course, they didn't have time periods. So he really couldn't say uh, it happened on this date because the only time he could get any kind of a dating or something is if he saw a portion of the sky. And then you could see like the stars that would give you an astrological timing. Wow. And, but that was kind of difficult to do a lot. And so, but there's things that he saw that those were, those two I thought was amazing because we wound up being in um, North Carolina when the attack hit and wound up having to drive home for two days. But it was like, this is in the book. And she had just done a lecture on Nostradamus the night before. And so we were out in the car trying to find if she had any books left, you know, where's the quatrain, you know, and exactly what it said as the towers were falling and stuff it was it was incredible wow. I mean, Mr. Thomas said if we can just get through the decade of the 90s we'll be okay see he saw this horrible war that he called referred to as a third world war because after the year 2000 we're going to be going into wonders you cannot even believe but he saw the possibility of a terrible war that would be not only atomic, but biological weapons, chemical weapons, um, germ warfare, all I mean, most, the most horrible things you can imagine that he verified for us. It'd be tough to make up any of these stories. They're unbelievable. 
I'd like to thank Nancy Vernon for taking time to share with us the amazing accounts and stories from Dolores Cannon's career. And if you want to check out her books that they've written throughout her career, they're available at OzarkMT.com. You should go there and check them out. They're amazing. And next week, time travel continues on Intrigue Journal with Juliana Fay and Project Pegasus. Thanks for watching us. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give us a thumbs up and we'd love to have you as a subscriber and be sure to click the bell for notifications. We upload these things every Thursday morning. And also tell us in the comments if you believe in past life regression and if so, who do you think you were?